it's easy to get uh, eager and demanding and under pressure to, well, we want to do something. We want to do it right now and we want it to happen. And when we make a decision what we're going to do, then we just want it to happen and, and we can push and push and try and make things happen. And, and sometimes if we're just patient and wait and let uh, things take their course and and let God do what he's going to do. Um, good things can happen, but we need patience. After we had lived in Canada for 10 years, we uh, sold the house that we had in Pennsylvania and we were able to pay off our mortgage there and we had some uh, money left over. We were going to use that money to buy a house in, uh, in Dryden. Um, at that time, houses in Dryden that were livable houses, that were respectable houses, were selling for maybe uh, sixty-five, seven to eighty-five thousand, sixty-five to a hundred thousand, something like that. And uh, we didn't have that much money, and so we had looked at some houses, but uh, we would have had to borrow money to buy them. And I just felt like we were not in a position at that time in life to borrow money. And so I didn't want to borrow money to buy a house, but the amount of money we had was hardly enough to buy a house. So I thought, well, we just have to invest it and wait and see if it grows enough in value to be able to buy a house, but we'll keep looking. Well, then someone told us, hey, there's some people just down the road a kilometer that have a house they want to they're going to want to sell and they're building a new house a new log house and maybe you could talk to them about about buying their house so we did and we went to see them and talk to them about buying their house and um, it was going to take them another year or a little more to finish their log house the house they were living in was a small house it wasn't big i don't remember how many square feet but it wasn't a very big house it was less than a thousand square feet and it was an old house that had started out as a homestead house and then numerous people that lived there had added on to it somebody had put a basement under it uh, there was a room attached on the side that was just kind of hanging on the, the side on, on put on, on posts but it wasn't very stable and um, um, basement hadn't been built properly and it was caving in um, so the one wall was almost completely caved in you could crawl into the basement on that side from the outside there was probably three feet between the floor of the first floor of the house and the, and the basement where the basement wall was it was just open and another basement wall was cracked and some of the other base two of the other basement walls Someone had poured concrete inside to try and keep them from, from caving in anymore. Um, the windows weren't very great. Uh, it wasn't, it was, it was an old, an old house. And um, so um, we talked about the price and the price for the house that he wanted was within the amount of money that we had. Um, but, he, and he said, now that, includes if I fix up the basement wall, get the house on a solid foundation before I move out. So I said, well, what would you sell it to me for with the basement wall the way it is? Like just leave the basement wall the way it is. And so he took another 5,000 or something off of the price. And as we were talking, he was saying, the problem is that I'm running out of money to finish my log house. And the bank won't give me any more money until the house is finished. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So I said, well, how much would you sell me the house for if we paid the whole thing? We transferred the deed into our name, but you could live here rent free. We determined how many months you could live here rent free. And then you'd have your money and you could use that to finish your log house. So he took some more money off. In the end, the price for the house was $25,000 and uh, but he would be able to live there rent-free for I think 
it was 16 or 18 months. So we agreed on that and that's what we were going to do. I went to the lawyer and to draw up the papers and the lawyer was saying, that's really foolish. You don't, you don't pay for property before you take possession of it. Like, um, you should be holding back some of the money because you know, you don't know, like, what if he trashes the house? Well, there's not much to trash. Like, there's not much he can do to the house. It's not in very good shape. I'm not worried about that. Besides, I already gave him my word that this is what we're going to do. So it might not be wise from a legal point of view, but we're going to do it. That's what I promised him, and we're going to do it. And so we did. And we gave him the money all up front. They lived there rent-free for as long as we had agreed that they could. And they were able to finish their log house. It worked for both of us. And then we had money left over that we could use to do the repairs once we moved into the house. So being patient and waiting worked out for us. And I believe that uh, God opened up that opportunity and it was it was a good opportunity for us and it was a good opportunity for the person that was selling. It worked for both of us and patience was what brought the opportunity for that to happen.